Jesus himself was in the Garden of Gethsemane before he gave his life for you and I and the entire world. And what did he say? Lord, if there's any way that we can do this a different way, let's do this different. Don't act like you're above that, but just don't yield to it. You don't try God. You don't try your relationship with him. You invest, you commit, come hell or high water. Quitting isn't an option. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Power in 10 Prayer Broadcast. We're excited you've joined us. Yes, we are. If you are single, you need to make sure and get registered Don't for the it. Single Life event happening next Saturday. May 14th. Yeah. So 13th is Mommy's Movie Night. And then the next day on the 14th, we are going to be doing Amazing Single Life. And actually, that's when we're honoring our single moms. It's going to mm. be at that Single Life event. Good morning, Alyssa. Good morning, Sylvia. Good morning, Johnny. So you do not want to miss that. Obviously, if you don't have this book um, on leadership, this is a great tool for your Ooh. library. It will be such a blessing to you. It's got a study guide uh, with every single, does it have a study guide with every single chapter? Uh, some personal notes that's going to help you. Good morning, Larissa. Good morning, Monique and Gerald. Love you guys. Good morning, Chad and Chapo. Love you guys. So glad that you are with us today. Good morning, Jessica. Love you guys. Good morning, Tony and Jacob. Love you guys so, so much. Okay, so uh, that's amazing, but it's not near as amazing as what's coming up tonight. Take a look at this, y'all. But I'm going to fix my life on the Word of God. I'm going to set my attention on your Word. I'm going to build my life on your Word. I'm going to stand on your Word. I'm going to speak your Word, and I'm not going to let the enemy steal the Word from my heart. And that Word will produce. 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. It's going to be epic. Are you excited? I'm very excited. What are you going to talk about? It's a surprise. It's a surprise? Okay. So, you want to tune in tonight at, hey, is it for everybody, or who should watch tonight? Who do you think should watch tonight? <sighs> Because I feel like you love the guys. Like, you know what I mean? I like, do love the guys, you know? I just grew up with the guys. Exactly. Grew up with my big brother. Yeah. My dad and my cousins. And so then and when, Amy, when Amy came and along, what happened to your heart? It just got bigger. It was like the just Grinch's heart. The Grinch's boom, heart. Boom, it just boom, got bigger boom, boom. When, yeah. a, when Amy came along. Yeah. So you're like the perfect... It's like, wow. Just when I thought life couldn't get any better. Exactly. So it was like you were the perfect man's man... But now you've got this like tenderness because you've got I'm this little sister. I'm a very tender person. Yeah, you got this little sister. I think that, that you was the tempering. That was the tempering that I needed because I was yeah. probably real, a little rough around the edges because I was so incredibly. Mad. Oh, I think you're still pretty rough. Like I was the so time incredibly whenever manly. you were putting on, putting out like a nationwide like background check on. Um, Glenn before they got ah, married, ah, like who is this oh, guy? That was all We're like again. calling everybody, make sure uh, Amy's uh, guy. future who husband, is this guy, a future guy. husband was going to be on the up and up, which he almost certainly is. Um, but Very yeah, pleased definitely, to find out he was right. Definitely a tenderness in your heart. So primarily, you're going to be talking to the guys tonight. But the words for everybody. The word is for everybody. The words for everybody. So, I mean, I have a Jump Start Youth Edition. I'm pretty sure it's like me and the adults. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know. So. I, loved it. I loved it when you're like, all right, um, teens, if you would be a little more active in the comments, maybe I would talk to you. Exactly. But you're a no-show. It's fine. You're like a no-show. You're probably like asleep right now, which is fine. Thank God for the amazing parents. Amen. Young at heart. Amen. Young and at heart. Guys, hungry and thirsty will be filled. That's right. Okay. It's Cinco de Mayo, Greg. I know. Today May is the Cinco de Mayo. Be with you. Was yesterday. Followed up by Cinco de Mayo. So it is 
Cinco de Mayo today, guys. And so, if you didn't know, in 1861, the Battle of Puebla pitched 6,000 French troops against a small, undersupplied Mexican force of 2,000 men. So 6,000 up against 2,000, not expecting to win the campaign, the Mexican army overcame the French in under a day. While the battle didn't win the war, the victory held great symbolism for Mexico during the Franco-Mexican War and buoyed the army throughout the conflict. Each year, Mexico commemorates the day with celebrations across the country, though it is not a federal holiday. So maybe you're going to eat some Mexican food today. I'm not really sure how you're going to celebrate Cinco de Mayo today, but... I'm going to eat some Mexican food. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, that's probably going to be the extent of my celebration is um, eating Mexican food. Glory. It's going to be great. Okay, it's also, speaking of food, National Hoagie Day. What? Okay, so... Like a hoagie bun? Yes, but listen to this. This started in 1953. Italians working at the World War I era shipyard in Philadelphia, known as Hog Island, packed their lunch to work every day. They introduced the sandwich by putting different meats, cheeses, and lettuce between two slices of bread. It was referred to as the Hog Island sandwich, which mm. they later shortened to the hoagie. Wow. Who even knew? Like, we just think like these sandwiches have like all Because it's on a hoagie bun. Yeah, we just think that this stuff. Who knew it was on a hog has island? Has already, like, yeah. Okay, so in the United States, turkey and tuna are the most popular meats in the hoagie. But the most popular place to get a hoagie sandwich in the USA is right there, Cosmos Deli in Philadelphia. Of course, because that's where it all started was in Philadelphia. Y'all, that just looks wow. authentic. Do you know what I'm saying? Wow. Like, the thing about it is, oh, oh my gosh, we have our pretzels. We need our pretzels. Tomorrow we're going to eat the pretzels because it was like, that looks so good. It was like National Pretzel Day. And Look so we at ordered. That. Oh my goodness. We ordered the best pretzels from wherever they were from. We did. And they're we sure here. Did. And tomorrow we're going to sample them on, on the pre show. Friday, fun day. We're going to sample it's the pretzels. It's technically still pre show for two more minutes. I know, but I don't want them to have to run down there and True. bring them up here. True. Especially You're because. So kind. There's one more national. Do you know what it is? Uh, it is National Day of Prayer. Of Prayer. Indeed. Let us pray. pray hey, let us joke's pray. on y'all. We do National Day of Prayer Monday through Friday. <laughs> We've been praying every day since we launched this broadcast however many months ago. But this is kind of interesting. Um, let's see. Early 1950s. Um, and an evangelical movement called for Congress and the president to proclaim a national day of prayer. The movement grew and a young leader, Billy Graham, led services for approximately 20,000 on the steps of the Capitol on February 3rd, 1952. Later that year, Congress proclaimed a joint resolution for a national day of prayer. President Henry S. Harry S. Truman proclaimed a national day of prayer to be observed on July 4th. Each year since that date, Americans have observed the day in their own way. The wow. observance moved to the first Thursday in May by President Ronald Reagan and has been proclaimed each year since. So as a nation, presidents and government officials have called for national days of prayers or thanks intermittently since before the country's existence. So July 20th, 1775, the Continental Congress issued a proclamation recommending a day of public humiliation, fasting, and prayer. 1795, George Washington proclaimed a day of public thanksgiving and prayer. May 9th, 1798, John Adams declared this day as a day of solemn humility, fasting, and prayer. March 1863, on March 3rd, Abraham Lincoln signed a congressional resolution during the Civil War, which called for April 30th as a day of fasting and prayer. So this is a thing, y'all. Wow. Wow. National Day of Prayer be dating back to 1775. So, obviously, we've been praying every single day. You got to pray just, just to make it for a today. while now. But all got dropped in 62. Yeah, there was, was a lot. Like, of, there was a lot of 52s. Praying, there was a lot like, of 52 in there. What happened in the 60s? What Go, happened in 62? Yo, what happened? Mm. So here's the deal. Uh, get with your family, maybe do something that you don't do normally do 
as it relates to prayer, and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, obviously, the faithfulness of God. I like that John Wesley says, it seems that God is limited by our prayer life. He can do nothing for humanity unless someone asks him. So that's right. what we're here to do. Love we're you guys. Here. Welcome yeah. to Power 10. everyone. Welcome to Power and 10 Prayer Broadcast. We're so excited you've joined us. Yes, we are super excited that you're with us today. Today is Thursday's edition. And y'all, if we had a favorite day, would it low-key be Thursday just because of the Great South? We got a lot of red in the Great Facts. South. See, Facts. just know though, you got a Yeti and I got a blessed with a beautiful life. Well, I got blessed with a beautiful wife. wife. Let's go. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. That is awesome. My We're phileo. My loyalty. Yeah. <clears throat> Y'all, when the late night message from last night is uploaded, it's going to be awesome. Such a great message. It's going to be uh, edit, heavily edited for public consumption. Exactly. Because some things are just like for the people. For you the know house. what I'm saying? Like they're just for the house. But Should the rest of it uh, will be so good. Okay. So I really like Proverbs today. Um, Proverbs is so good. And let me just tell you guys, um, we've wa we watched a movie several years ago, and if you've been a part of our Choose Life family for any length of time, you might have been here for this Married Life event where we watched the movie The Song. Will you guys link that in the comments or in the description? I, I think it's great for um, not young eyes, but older eyes, um, because it's such a modern day depiction mm. of literally Solomon's journey. Um, away from basically everything his dad had taught him mm -hmm. and how, like, gosh, the way of the transgressor is hard and you reap what you sow. And so after seeing the song, that movie, it's challenging to read the book of Proverbs mm -hmm. without making the correlation because what we see is so powerful. Right. Um, and so wouldn't you say that's like a good watch oh, yeah. for... Yeah, for a, older eyes. Older eyes for sure. Um, and I don't even know if it's like date night vibes. Like it's not like a happy. No, probably not. Probably not uh, date night vibes because it's very. <laughs> which, which doesn't really indicate when it would be good for. Exactly. Like study, <laughs> like research, uh, Proverbs research. Um, anyway, the song, great movie. They did a great job um, depicting modern day, uh, modern day. Uh, so Proverbs 5 Y'all, it hits a lot of this stuff today. So let's give it to us in the street version. And let me tell you what verses. We're going to look at Proverbs That's 5 me. today. Here we go. In the street version, we're going to look at it in the message. And we're going to look at it in the living Bible. Y'all, we're getting all the translations out. You know why? Because 2 Timothy 2.15 says that we're to study. We're supposed to be proficient in this. You know, we listen to a lot of stuff. We accumulate a lot of knowledge that has absolutely no quality application to our life mm -hmm. whatsoever. Mm -hmm. This actually adds value. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So let's do Proverbs 5, 7-ish. 7. <clears throat> Verse 7. Now, because of this, I want you to listen closely and do not dare forget what I'm telling you. Without hesitation, turn around and run like crazy. Do not even get close to her door again. If you do, all of your purity and honor will be wasted in a matter of moments, and thoughts will haunt you all your days. If you hang around and create offspring, there is a good chance that you will spend your life working for, a, for the hoe and paying child support. So As true. if that wasn't bad enough, her new squeeze will probably do nothing more than spend your money. Pastor Dean has a way with words. Well, and you know what? 
over the years in discipleship and, and mentoring young adults, especially the guys, I know that we've, especially Proverbs 5 and Proverbs 7, just like specifically mm-hmm. for the men, although we can make correlations um, in these truths. You know, we were listening to, Pastor Greg and I were listening to a message um, by Miles Monroe uh, about a week and a half ago. And um, basically he just said, like, whatever, like every woman's problem is tied to a man. He said, sorry, fellas. It is what it is. It is what it is. Every woman's problem is tied to a man. And when you look at that verse and you look at like the fatherlessness, Mm -hmm. you know, like you just have, you just like, you just have sex. Mm -hmm. You ain't married. Mm -hmm. You got these kids everywhere. Facts. You know, and like a lot of men, like, you know, obviously. Where are the fathers? (laughs) Where are the fathers? (laughs) Fathers, where are you? Like in youth ministry and student ministry, it's just like, it's almost like you just wash your hands of it. Right. Like their mom's raising them, you're paying child support. Baby's having babies. But you're not getting present. Right. That's still your kid, yo. Mm hmm. Kids having kids. That's your, I don't care how old you are, that's your kid. That's what I'm saying. And you're their dad. I'm saying it. And it's your job. It's your job. It's your job to show up and not just with your money. Like how they turn out. Like you're going to stand before God. You're accountable for that. Right. That's your seed, yo. Right. It's an epidemic. Like keep your stuff in your pants. Oh, there Stop we go. Stop having kids. There we go. If you don't want to raise them. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to be there for them. It's good. Man, like my dad was there. Your dad was there. Facts. And they didn't have good examples. So that's no excuse. Your grandpa was an alcoholic. My dad was a no, my dad's dad was a no show. He was isolated. He was not involved in my dad's life unless my dad had a baseball, right? But my dad was so present. My dad is still present, like still present. It ain't right. It ain't right when you don't have your house in order. Mm. It ain't right. There's no order. There's no order in people's lives. Right. I mean, I look at problems with kids, problems with young adults, problems with teenagers, and it all goes back to that. Dr. Miles Monroe is even talking about, you know, all these athletes that stand up and they want to thank their mama. They ain't thanking their dad. Why? Because they don't know their dad. In the message, verse 7 says, read it right here. Read it, read it, read it. (laughs) Verse 7. So my friends, listen closely. Don't treat my words casually. Here, I got some PD vibes for you right now. Okay? You treat his words casually. You treat the word casually. You treat your life casually. Mm. Meaning you treat your wee-wee casually. Oh. Just... Whipping it out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Facts. You treat the word casually. You treat your wee-wee casually. <laughs> <laughs> what translation was that, Pastor Terry? <laughs> <coughs> this shows up Heal. in every area of your life. It does. You treat his words casually. You treat your life casually, right? Yes, the casualties of your life. God created man first for a reason. Hmm. We cannot keep living in this demasculinated society. Wow. Be like demon and man. Whatever. We can't. We We cannot live in this society. God made man responsible. He didn't even address Eve when Eve ate the apple first. Oh. He didn't even address her. Oh. He looked straight at Adam and said, what have you done? Facts. He didn't even address her. He addressed Adam because he had had the conversation with Adam. Amen. You treat his words casually. You treat your wee-wee casually. (laughs) And it creates casualties. Facts. Broken homes, broken lives. And you're like, "Mm, uh, mm mm-mm. Nonchalant about it. Verse 7 in the Living Bible. You got your Living Bible today? I do. Break it out. Break it out, yo. Verse 7. About the big dog. 
Bringing up the big large uh, print. You got uh, the large print on this. I got the itty bitty actually, print. Actually, your living Bible wasn't bad. I think it was the message that was small. The message is so small. This is a tiny version message for sure. Five, seven. Reading from the uh, coffee table Bible here. <laughs> Young men, listen to me. And okay. Listen, 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 listen. Y'all, we got a remix. We got a remix today, y'all. We got a remix for you. In the heart of Cinco de Mayo. Let's in the roll heart, it. in the heart. Listen, listen to me, listen to me. Like, like I do this all the time. And if I go out at the, at the house with the girl, that has his toys. And then Matthew has all his toys. Okay, but I have to yell at you guys. Okay. Okay. Grandma's house. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Verse seven, listen, men, listen to me and never forget what I'm about to say. Run from her. Do not go near her house, lest you fall to her temptation and lose your Mainly just seven. honor. Mainly just seven. Right. Because it applies to all of us. We have... It, we cannot, the Bible says in James 1, through 25, that if, if, you for, if you're forgetful here, you will not be blessed. Right. So it's not just about hearing the word of God, but it's working it into our lives. Yeah, being um, a doer. Exactly, being a doer and not being a forgetful here. Okay, let's jump on, the, not taking his word casually, whether you're male or female, obviously. Um, in verse about 17 of Proverbs 5, He's talking about your your relationship with your wife, but the Message Bible makes one statement, and maybe you can find it about verse 21 or maybe verse 19. Okay. I think it's about verse 18, actually, verse 18. Okay. And Allow all you do to be blessed by doing things according to the mind of God, and let only your wife be the one in whom you rejoice. You were once totally satisfied with her, and nothing has changed. Yeah, it basically the message Bible says never take her love for granted. Oh, that's good. And really that's 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 not just in application to obviously your marriage relationships, but just in general, like all that we've been given, when you stop expressing gratitude towards that thing is when you start treating it incorrectly. Right. Whether it's your pastor, whether it's your boss, whether it's your children, like gratitude will position your attitude. Mm -hmm. Even your day yeah. You can't take this day for granted. Right. You know, <clears throat> I remember growing up and, you know, just different insecurities are in comparison. You know, there was a certain part of my body that, that I always like had a hard time with. And mm -hmm. I, I felt like, you know, a, a little bit like insecure about. And again, dad, who's so present, like my dad was so mm -hmm. present. He would, he would like bring everything into perspective of like people who were like in a wheelchair. Right. And they didn't have access right. to those parts of their body that right. I did. And it was like, it would immediately put me in perspective. Right. You know, like you're, you're upset that you have to go to work today. Well, think about all those people today that, that are on life support, right. that are in a coma. Think mm -hmm. about people who don't have the use of their, their faculties. Think of those people that are behind bars today, right? And you could be behind bars, but the only difference is you haven't been caught. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you get up with gratitude that will position you like you can't take the opportunities that you've been given for granted that that will cut off the flow of faithfulness right right it'll cut off the flow of thankfulness or, or excuse me it'll cut off the flow of faithfulness right. and faithfulness is required in order to produce, in order to be um, blessed, and in order to be a blessing. So if you're like, you know, frustrated, and you're taking the fact that you've got a job, you know, even this morning when we're sitting up here, like I'm thinking about like you know, like these cameras that we have. I'm right. thinking about this equipment that we have. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm yeah. like, 
I'm like not taking for granted because I remember a time when we didn't have the things that we had. We didn't have the staff that we had. We didn't have the opportunities that we had. Mm-hmm. Now we're not gonna, we don't have every camera we're ever gonna have, right. but we don't have all the staff we're ever gonna have. We're, right. we're growing all the time, but I'm grateful and I'm not taking what I have for granted today. And that keeps the flow of faithfulness going yeah. in my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So anyway, that was that. In the Living Bible, it says, be happy, yes, rejoice in the wife of your youth. And that can apply to anything. Like, be grateful yep. for what you have. That's and good. Honestly, how many times do I tell, like, I'm so grateful that you said yes, that you wanted to marry me. I, mean, I feel like you tell me all the time. I mean, like there were other, I'm so awesome. There were other people that That's you could have married. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being sure. honest. Like, you I had a couple other saying. options. I understand A couple other saying. Sanchez, you know, little <laughs> girls that were, like, trying to, like, you know, get a little cow strip love or whatever, you and your brother, who knows. Um, but but you picked me. And, like, there's a lot of incredibly beautiful, God-loving women yeah. that, haven't, that haven't had, you know, the opportunity that I have. Sure. And so, yeah, I'm sure sometimes I bug you, you bug me, but, like... Uh, I'm sorry, what? Just kidding. <laughs> not really, though. I mean, honestly, like, we've been together so long, like, you just kind of, like... Say? Get in a flow. We together. together. You just kind of can get in a flow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you do. But anyways, I'm just grateful. And so practice gratitude. If you feel like you're lazy and lethargic, you ain't grateful, yo. You're taking Mm -hmm. that for granted. And now you're all complaining and thinking like the grass is greener on the other side. No, 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 no. In the words of Justin Bieber, give it to him. Uh, Let's see. I'd rather work it out with you than start over with someone new. (laughs) The grass ain't greener. It's green where you water it. Wherever you go, there you are. So you think your marriage is a problem, and then you show up in a new relationship, and it's like, bam, same problems. Why? Same you. Mm -hmm. If you got somebody that's willing to put up with your stuff, you better be grateful. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm True. saying? You know what I'm saying? That's Thanks what I'm for saying. putting up with me, babe. That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. All right, read 21 through 23. Verse 21, that's exactly what you're doing when you follow a moment of stupid to be with a hoe. Do you not realize that everything you do and everywhere you go is known Chip by God? off now. the old block. Yep. Right? Like father, like daughter. Same. Like daughter, yeah. like father. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Casual. Drop in the hoe. Casual with his words. Casual with his weenie, <laughs> his wee wee, whatever. You got it from you. You got it from your father, <laughs> and your mother is exactly praying the Holy Ghost right now. Whatever. Oh, that's funny. Did you read it all? <laughs> no. <laughs> <coughs> well, you were looking at me. I'm looking at you. All right, here we go. Start over. Start I'm over. I'm starting in twenty. I'm starting in twenty. Okay. Don't get trapped. Why in the world would you allow yourself to be trapped? By the one who does not really love you. I ain't going to be trapped. That is exactly what you're doing when you follow a moment of stupid to be with a hoe. Exactly. Do you not realize everything you do and everywhere you go is known by God who checks out all your night spots? That's so good. I like that so much. Listen to it in the... Here's the thing. Like, they give me attention. Listen. Your wife would give you attention, but you're a rear hole at home. Oh, keeping it real on the broadcast this morning. And you're all nice and like best behavior oh, at work. It's you're your all like the hero at work, and then at home I you're like it. a zero. Mm. And you wonder why and no then one's a giving hero you attention. Comes along along with the string to carry on. on. You're like helping your coworker. You Let me he- get that for you. you Let me get that door for you. You ain't been a hero at home since like huh. 1993. <laughs> <laughs> and you're wanting like hero treatment. Uh uh-uh, uh, I ain't with you today. A hero I ain't at with, the office and with, a zero at the house. Exactly. I ain't doing it with you today. Uh uh-uh. uh. Don't be playing games. Come on, bro. No. Come Proverbs on, bro. 5. They just listen to me or whatever. Listen. I got your list. They hear me deeply. Okay, it's getting deep in here. Smells late. too, like Smells the toilet. Like the toilet. Mark 5.21, mark well that God doesn't miss a move you make. So You see, y'all, this is a thing. Proverbs 5.21. It's like, who are you hiding from? 
Who are you hiding from? Everything is naked and open before the God who made you. Amen. Mark well that God doesn't miss a move you make. He's aware of every step you take. The shadow of your sin will overtake you. You'll find yourself stumbling all over yourself in the dark. Death is the reward. That, that just hits. Death is the reward for an undisciplined life. Now mm -hmm. that applies to every area of our life. Mm -hmm. Death is the result of an undisciplined life. Your foolish decisions trap you in a dead end. The Living Bible says, For God is closely watching you, and he weighs carefully everything, everything. that you do. Yeah. And in verse 23, He shall die because he will not listen to the truth. He has let himself be led away into incredible folly. Death is the reward of an un disciplined life. It does not pay to be undisciplined. It right. does not pay to do it your way. Right. Amen. When a man refuses the mind of God and the wisdom it represents, in the magnitude of his stupidity, he will disappear from life. That's right. They become a zero. You gone. You went from a hero to a zero. Don't take his words casually. Listen, 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 listen. Put the word in a place of priority in your life. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right? Start your day with the word. End your day with the word. Put the word in between. Put the word in your mouth. Put the word in your children. Put the word to work out in your company. Put the word to work in your finances. The word, the word, the word, the word, the word. The word delivers. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. What's up, y'all, in the Great South? Let's find out. Is it news or is it narrative? Obviously, we're in an election year, like midterm um, election year. So a lot of stuff's been going on as it pertains to people. A lot of funny business. A little bit shifty. Things are getting a little shifty. allegedly, yeah. And so we're heading to the Great South. And, I, I mean, the Great South makes up for the executive branch that we pray for, which is the House, which is our beloved Nancy Pelosi, House Leader. So that's where we're focusing our National Day of Prayer today, y'all, is on... There she is, folks, with her neck warmer <laughs> securely around her neck. And the Great South. We got a lot of cool things to cover in the Word today as soon as we um, finish this. The narrative. Asa, Asa, Asa Hutchinson. Governor Hutchinson. Arkansas. Arkansas Governor Hutchinson is a Republican, allegedly a Christian. Arkansas Republican Governor Asa Hutchinson reacted to the leaked Supreme Court decision draft that would overrule Roe v. Wade on Tuesday's special report. Asa, Asa Hutchinson, we believe in the independence of the judiciary, and if you support that, then you have to be very concerned about this intentional attack on the court. And I do believe that the leaker will be caught. I think they'll be identified. It's a small number of people, and with the techniques and interviews at the discretion of the investigation, they ought to be able to identify that one. And so that's something that the president and others should, in a bipartisan way, be speaking out against that kind of unethical conduct at a minimum that we see uh, in this leak. But in terms of the overall question, I think about my past for 35 years, I've been going to pro-life rallies, talking about the overturn of Roe vs. Wade, and to think that it really emphasizes that engaging in the political side, engaging in who we elect to office makes a real difference, and who is on our court makes a difference. It does. It does. Right. It, it makes does. a real difference who we put in office. So Asa's not for the leaking. Obviously, that, that's illegal. That shouldn't have happened. But he is pro-life. Mm -hmm. We are pro-life, too. We're pro-choice and pro-life. You know what that means? That means Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I've set before you death and life, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life so that you and your seed may live. Um, but as it pertains to life, Proverbs 6, 16, one of the seven things God hates is a hand that sheds innocent blood. Right. So we, we ain't about it. We ain't about mm -hmm. it, yo. We just, we're not about it. And honestly, if guys are fathered in society correctly, there won't be a need for that. You don't put your wee-wee where it doesn't belong, you don't end up with kids that you don't want. Facts. I'll never forget the first time I, stalk, I talked with a young person 
um, about some situations in their life and they had basically like gone farther than they wanted to go, which, you know, whatever. I can't get into that today. Um, but th so they went, they just went to Walmart because they were concerned. Mm -hmm. And you just take something that you can get at Walmart. Mm hmm. And I just remember sitting there, and as a youth pastor, young adult pastor, you know, you don't, you don't, you're not surprised, you know what I mean? You don't show that in the conversation because they want help, they want restoration. And mm -hmm. so you give it to them and you help them because there's nothing bigger than the blood of Jesus. That's Even right. if you've had an abortion, like there's nothing, right. the blood of Jesus can wipe you white as snow and, and snow. And so that was the purpose of that conversation. But just in my own soul, like as a person, uh, not just as a pastor, like as a person, you know, I walked away from that. And I, I mean, honestly, I think it probably took me like a week at least to stop thinking about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. All that was involved in that, that mm -hmm. there was such a product at Walmart. What was going on in these young people's heads? Mm -hmm. The fact that there was potentially like life that was destroyed in mm -hmm. that moment, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. On that note, let's head to Louisiana. John Bell Edwards, Democrat, Catholic. The past couple of years have been active hurricane season for Louisiana, and officials are expecting another one this year. There could still be 10 to 20 storms that end up forming, but as we've all unfortunately experienced over the last two years, it just takes one, said Ben Scott from the National Weather Service. It takes one to change our lives. It takes one to change everything that we know and create a lot of problems But if you us. would plead the blood of Jesus, no blood. harm can come near your dwelling. Amen. Literally, every house, every business around you can be traumatized by these weather patterns, but your house can remain. Amen. So I encourage you, if you've got family in Louisiana, if you are in Louisiana, plead the blood. I don't care what they're reporting. And it's almost like they want it to happen. <laughs> they are definitely anticipating it. Definitely anticipating it. Okay, so Louisiana, weather, weather, weather. Today's weather report. Exactly, y'all. Mississippi Tate Reeves is a Republican. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S -S allegedly a Christian. Just last Thursday, Governor Tate Reeves said violence in Jackson was a reason he vetoed legislation that would have pushed $13.2 million into a project at... Lefleur's Bluff to expand a children's playground and upgrade a golf course. The project had been touted as a significant economic development project that could draw visitors from throughout the state and region. Two days later, an officer killed a gunman at the Mad Bug Festival at the Mississippi State Fairgrounds after a gun battle between teenagers. According to the governor, <laughs> more than 100 shots were fired into the crowd with oh my rifles gosh. and other weapons before law enforcement stopped the attack. On countless occasions, I've expressed the importance of having a strong and safe capital city, Reeves said, and vetoing the Lufers. Lafleur's Bluff project last Thursday on Monday. So Reeves, he's not going to pump money into a potentially dangerous neighborhood and expect tourism to be on the rise there. Yeah. Basically. Maybe he's going to hire more officers to stop violence. How much money was that supposed to be? Thirteen million or something. Yeah, put that thirteen million somewhere else. Thirteen point two. Yeah, we're not throwing that into that. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Lawlessness. No. 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 Which is no. good because money block, block, block. money spent wrong doesn't. Fix the problem. No, it actually creates more problems. Right. Alabama K. Ivy Republican, allegedly a Christian. The campaign for Governor K. Ivy recently released a new campaign to add. And it's awesome. We're going to show it to you guys. Yeah, we got it. Let's roll it. Some things are just facts. Summer's hot, the ocean's big, and gender is a question of biology, not identity. That's why Ivy banned transgender youth sports, banned left wing sexual propaganda from our schools and made it a felony for transgender surgery on children in Alabama. Here in Alabama, we're gonna go by how God made us because we identify with something liberals never will, reality. Roll it again, roll it again. What a sweet Some lady. things are just facts. Summer's hot, the ocean's big, and gender is a question of biology, not identity. That's why Ivy banned transgender youth sports, banned left-wing sexual propaganda from our schools, and made it a felony for transgender surgery on children in Alabama. Here in Alabama, we're gonna go by how God made us 
Because we identify with something liberals never will, reality. Third time's the charm. Just kidding. We don't no, have to watch no, it again. No, no, but no. Can't do it again. It is so good. And honestly, it's so good, but it's Her also... Her accent, everything about it is great. But it's also, like, so hilarious to think that we literally have to have that in our ad campaign that wee wee means boy, non wee wee means girl. Additionally, she signed House Bill 322, which requires students to use a restroom that agrees with their birth gender. Hallelujah! 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 <laughs> it also bans instruction of sexual orientation and gender identity to kindergarten through fifth grade in public school. Have you seen students. anything on that curriculum? Oh. Y'all, give me the name of that in production. Give me the name of that video, which I don't know if you can still get it. We we bought it and um, did a preview for it, a preview, a, a showing of it. Um, to anybody that wanted to in our church, but it basically goes through that curriculum. Yeah, it's crazy. Trash, y'all. Crazy. The books that they used, it showed images, Whose cartoons. children are they is what it was called. Whose children are they? I don't know how you can access it now. Right, They we were supposed to charge a, a ticket price, but we just counted the people and sent them the money. For right, it. We just right. paid the tickets or whatever. Right. For whoever came. Whose children are they? I'm sure they can find it. Exactly. Georgia, Brian Kemp is Republican. Whose children are they? Transgender student athletes in Georgia cannot compete on sports teams matching their gender identity after Georgia High School Association vote on Wednesday. The GHSA voted unanimously to approve youth to compete according to their sex determined on their birth certificate, according to a tweet from Governor Brian Kemp. The vote comes just days after Georgia governor signed a slew of controversial education bills last week, one of the most contentious being House Bill 1084. They're linking that in the description. Um, they can stream it. Whose so, children are they? Yes. Cool. One of the most... Uh, yeah, not date night material, but just FYI material. <laughs> okay, sorry. Are boys boys in Georgia and girls girls? Okay, so um, the vote comes days after Georgia governor signed a slew of controversial education bills last week, one of the most contentious being House Bill 1084, which authorized the Athletic Association to choose to ban trans kids in sports. It was a move that Kemp said and was an effort to protect fairness. So it sounds like uh, he banned the boys from competing with the girls. Senator previously voted to flatly ban transgender boys and girls from playing on the school sports teams matching their gender identity, but House Speaker David Ralston had blocked that measure. Instead, Georgia lawmakers placed the decision with the association in last-minute move as 2020 session came to a close. At the time HB 1084 was announced, Democrats reacted angrily to the legislation with some saying the bill doesn't protect youth, trans youth. So now the Democrats are upset about it? They're saying this bill targets the most vulnerable Georgians' transgender youth. No, it doesn't. It protects the people who aren't confused. Listen, <sighs> if you don't know that you're a boy because you have a wee wee, you are vulnerable. Okay, yes. there's a lot going on there. You were either born with a spout or you were born without. Let's see. So. As Pastor Dean would say, check your equipment. In Georgia. Hey, she, Kay Ivy, she made it a felony yeah. for that surgery. Right. Wow. So. You go, Kay. Don't live in Alabama then. Florida, Ron DeSantis, Republican, Roman Catholic. California. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. California Governor Gavin Newsom torched everyone ranging from Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and West Virginia Senator uh, Joe Manchin to National Democratic Party at large during Wednesday press conference where he discussed California's plan for if and when Roe v. Wade is overturned. Newsom started by fo focusing fire on conservative Supreme Court justices, but expanded his remarks into wider screen about Republican-led states' legislation on social issues and the Democratic Party's response. This has never happened in our lifetime, Newsom said. They're taking away rights that have been affirmed over and over again and well-established. Wake up, America. Wake Actually, up. bro, that's what happened. We did wake up, and we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. 
We're done with killing the unborn. We're done with calling evil good. We are done. We are done. We are done. Basically, uh, this article. Our, our friend Ron DeSantis is stirring up, uh, stirring up some demons here. Yeah, and you will for sure. With his uh, when you actually good exalt policy. this, yeah. When you exalt this, that's what happens. All the religious demons get stirred up. Yeah. Whether it's the prosperity message, the message of healing, the message that God is good, the uh, everything that this Bible represents that's all prosperity, good and all Jesus. Healing, health, joy, you know, peace, strength. No, think about that strength. on the way to work today when. When Jesus said of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, your tradition has made the word of God of None no effect. effect. You pulling it up? Believe that. I mean, you just get, you just get. <sighs> you just get peace and joy like a river. Mark 7, 13. I've got peace mm, like, like a river. river. I've got peace like a river. river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Mark 7, 13. Mm -hmm. Make the word of God void through your tradition. So yeah, this this that should have never, that Roe versus Wade, honestly, and all that that perpetuated. Mm -hmm. It was like a mountain of like crap. <laughs> with Planned Parenthood and everything that that represents. Wicked. South Carolina, Henry McMaster, Republican. So, basically, the article about Ron DeSantis was about... Gavin Newsom being mad at Ron DeSantis. Bring it, bro. Bring it, bro. Bring it. Bring it. Get your boxing gloves out. My money's on Ron DeSantis. My money's on Ron. Governor DeSantis, that is. After, this is South Carolina, Henry McMaster. Hey, y'all, pull up the clip where Rocky fought the Russian. Just like real short. Do like little Rocky music. <laughs> and then it's going to be like, <laughs> it's going to be like in our minds, we're going to superimpose. DeSantis. Yes. Kicking the crap out of yes. Newsom. When you got it, just let us know. But until then, one of our founding fathers. <laughs> He's still alive. He's still alive Henry in McMaster. the form of Henry McMaster. He's got a little curly looks, mullet there. He looks like it. Colony he pony. He looks so colonial. He might have a colony pony in the back. We just don't know for sure. He looks so colonial. After Monday night's report of the leaked draft of the Supreme Court, opinion indicated a majority of Ooh, justices were poised right here, to overturn the landmark Roe v. Wade ruling, which currently protects women's rights to an abortion uh, across the country, South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster so said that he was so very It's my pleased. life, my body, as it pertains to that, but they want to jab all of us. Mm. You're full of crap. Mm. You're full of crap. Sounds like a double standard, Pastor Charity. Sounds like a bunch of crap. <laughs> I need a poop gun. Where's the poop gun? That's what I need. That one game that has little turds, that's what I need up here. And then I can just hit the button and the turd can fly out. <laughs> oh, from stories. Yeah. Uh, until then, I'll just use the baloney. It's a bunch of baloney, guys. It's a it bunch is of baloney. A bunch of baloney. Uh, McMaster Republican said he does not believe Roe has legal basis in the U.S. Constitution and told reporters Tuesday that he would be supportive of a more aggressive anti abortion legislation <laughs> than what is already in place hallelujah, in South Carolina. Hallelujah! 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 That's right. The governor added he does not believe there should be exceptions for rape or incest in abortion bans. The more we can protect life in South Carolina, the better it will be for everybody involved. Listen, if this is not an option, uh, that's biblical. people are keeping their wee-wees in their pants. Right. That's just the bottom line. The article goes on to say that last year, McMaster signed the fetal heartbeat bill into law, which bans most abortions after a fetal heartbeat is detected, technically around six weeks, making one of the most restrictive abortion laws in the country. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, she modulated. Wow. Mm. So, oh, yeah, see, that's the data reasons, we need. Reasons uh, for overall abortion for 2020. The data's released every three years. Uh, less than 0.5% uh, victim of rape. 3%. Fetal health problems, 4% physical health problems. Wow. On that note, the Rocky clip is ready. 
You want all those? Yes, let's just pause for effect on the rest of these stats and watch Governor Ron DeSantis, <laughs> a.k.a. Rocky. Kick the crap kick out the of. Kick the crap out of. Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom. In your mind, guys. This is on the fly. We haven't had time to superimpose people's faces. <laughs> but just in your mind, know what's happening right now. They're toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The Russian towers above the American. It's a true case of David and Goliath here. It's unbelievable, the, the, the condition of both men, but the Russian I must break you. Oh, Ima! Wait! Ivan Turagawa! Remember what I said back there about wanting to be you? Yeah. Forget it. Thanks, boy. Take it straight to him. Take it straight to him. Be a rock for him. You understand? Be a rock for him. Be strong. All right? Now take it to him. No pain. No pain. No pain. No pain. All right, work to it. There's the back of the opening round, and Rocky Balboa comes out to the center of the ring. Like the Russian, right back in the back of corner now. Backing Rocky Balboa up with a jab. And Balboa is not staying on balance because of the long jab of the Russian. Governor Rod. Those are all just night for you. Those are all just verbal verbal shots by by Newsom. Yeah. Very ineffective against DeSantis. We don't have time to watch DeSantis. Who do you think is gonna win? So, okay. all of the stats, all these other, like... Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Well, it's all the same stuff. I know, but Victim just of rape, fetal health. Okay, here we go. The percentage of 0 0.01 pregnancy resulted from an incestuous relationship. 0.01%. Like, a tenth of a percent. Um, the woman was raped. 0.15%. Uh, woman's life was endangered by the pregnancy. 02 So these are all less than 1%. Uh, there was serious fetal abnormality, 0.98%. Uh, 1.48, the woman's physical health was threatened by the pregnancy. 1.88, uh, it was fine. The woman's psychological health was threatened by the pregnancy. The woman's psychological health was threatened by the pregnancy. You know what? I think I'm, I'm having trouble with this in my mind. I'm going to murder this baby. Uh, that's 1.88%. Now... So all that less than 2%. The woman aborted for social or economic reasons. 20.4%. It just isn't going to look very good that I have this child with this man I'm not married to, so I think I'm going to murder the child. 20.4%. 74.9%. Basically 75%. No reason. No reason elected. 75%. Shouldn't have saved a Rocky clip for last. <laughs> that would have been a nice segue out of that. Pretty sobering. This doesn't hold water. In the name of Jesus. North Carolina, Roy Cooper is a Democrat. He's allegedly a Presbyterian. Governor Roy Cooper on Wednesday signed an executive order that rewards eligible state employees with a day of vacation leave if they get their first COVID-19 booster shot because they're going to need it. They're going to need that day to recover from the severe side effects of the COVID-19 booster shot. According to a statement released by the governor's office, the order baloney, provided up baloney. to eight hours of fully paid leave to eligible state employees who, Roy, on or before August 31st, Governor Roy, get you, your look, booster you look down. haggard. Need to get We're over this COVID-19 nonsense. Come on, We're bro. Come them. on. We're going to boost them. We're going to jab them. That's 
what we were told to do. Boost them and That's down. the last blue. There's only two blues. No more blue. In this whole day. Tennessee Governor John, Bill Lee, Republican. And again, not that it's not two heads of the same snake, but we're seeing some people. Disruptive Republicans that actually. Yeah. That are actually right leaning. That are actually right Republican. Governor Bill Lee from Tennessee on Monday signed a bill into law that will invest $1 billion into Tennessee's public education system. The ceremony took place in William, Williamson County. Here's to you, Tennessee public school system. <laughs> $1 billion. You're welcome. What are they using it for? Well, they're going to use it, Pastor Charity, for economically disadvantaged students, for students living in areas with a concentrated poverty, students in sparsely populated communities, and students in small districts, students with unique learning needs. That's where that $1 billion is going. Lee Maybe says the our governor can do that in New Mexico so that the schools in those neighborhoods in our community don't have to, don't do have like to call the church and, and call help. and ask for help. Not that we're opposed to helping them, but we probably uh, will. There's like a bazillion dollars of oil and money. gas surplus money. Exactly. There's tax money available to help those kinds of things. Virginia Glenn Forget Youngkin everybody. is a Republican. He's a Christian. It's National Day of Prayer, and we need to pray, honestly. This has gone long. Glenn Youngkin? Was a hundreds uh, was among hundreds today marching for life. Became the first governor to march with the group. The fourth annual March for Life rally comes as many await the Dobbs vs. Jackson Women's Health Organization Supreme Court decision. Other legislators and leaders showed support at Wednesday's rally, including Lieutenant Governor uh, of Virginia Winsome Earl Sears. Uh, let's see what all of us understand is at a core fundamental issue is the humanity is not. A grant of government, it is a gift from God. Advocates hope Wednesday's United Front will be a message to legislators to end abortions in Virginia. Hmm. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All right. What did Jesus have to say about prayer? Let's look at it. We'll talk more about it tomorrow. Matthew chapter 6. Give it to us in the King James Version. El what King is Ogenzo. often referred to as the Lord's we going Prayer. To? Matthew 6, 5 through 13. Just for a couple minutes, we're going to introduce this and we'll get more into it tomorrow. Matthew what 6, What did Jesus have to say about five. prayer? The Lord's Prayer, we learn from this. It's not the prayer that we pray. Mm -hmm. It literally segued between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, but there are some principles that we need to embrace that Jesus taught us right. in this prayer. So Matthew 6, 5. Through 13, yes. And when, thou, when you pray, pray not as the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they will have their reward. But you, when you pray, enter into your closet. And when you have shut the door, pray to the Father in secret. And your Father, which seeth in secret, will reward you openly. Verse 7, but when you pray, use not vain repetition, as the heathen do, for they think they will be heard for their much speaking. Be not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. After this manner, therefore pray, our Father, which art in heaven... Hallowed be thy name. So we're praying to the Father. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Uh, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, that's it. Okay. So number <clears throat> one, private prayer. Mm. This is what we have to learn from this prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother Hagin said it this way. And I like it. Public prayer is necessary and vital in the life of the church, which yes. is what we're fixing to do right. corporately. <clears throat> Praying together as a family. We did that growing up. You did that growing up. Mm -hmm. It's necessary and vital to the spiritual strength of the home. But private prayer is essential. Did you hear that? Private prayer is essential to the spiritual life of the individual. It is when we grow in spiritual stature, in our own private prayer time. Mm -hmm. It should not be just as those 
It should not be just at those crisis times when we are driven to our knees. Right. Right? We'll link uh, this in the description, but a poem that Pastor Dean wrote um, years and years ago, and it was literally birthed out of that premise. The Spirit of God was like correcting him. They were going through like challenging times at that particular season. I think it was like 93 as it pertains to the church. And um, so he wrote this, this poem was really birthed out of this struggle. And uh, I'll, I'll let you uh, be the one to read it in your best poetic voice. <laughs> Which last time you read poetry, I mocked. I will not mock it yeah, today. Yeah, you did. Henceforth. And then I think I, I think I got out of love with you. Just kidding. You pray with earnest fervor in the midst of every storm. You cry aloud the need for seed when the economy is torn. Isn't that exact like crisis, crisis driving us? to our knees. Right? Now, that doesn't mean that we don't need to go to him. The Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain and your help time and mercy of need. in a time of need. Yeah. He's a stronghold in a day yeah. of trouble, but like only when you're in trouble. Right. See you next time. Right. Like your kids have no relationship with you until they want something. Your wife never talks to you until mm -hmm. she wants to buy something. Mm -hmm. Your husband never talks to you until he wants to get laid. Oh, snap. Keeping it real this morning. The next, that what, what are these That's called, these little uh, stanzas. stanza, the next stanza. <laughs> Start it from the top, because we, we need to take it back, because I just said a bunch of stuff. Let's Thank you for that interjection, Pastor take Charity. Take it back, Let's take it back. Let's run it back from the top. Private prayer You is pray with essential. earnest fervor in the midst of every storm. You cry aloud, the need for seed when the economy is torn. You claim my very best when you think I haven't heard. As if you think my nature's changed and I won't perform my word. Listen close, my child of love, and hear my very plan. It's not that I don't hear you and know that you... Wow. It's okay. You got it. You got it. I believe in you. Thanks, Pastor Trey. It's not that I don't hear you and not that I don't care. But when... But why are you not in my face when everything is fair? It's not that I don't hear you and not that I don't care. But why are you not in my face when there's an abundance of seed to share? Whether you have or haven't doesn't affect my ear. But it seems I only see you when your heart Shots fired. is full of fear. It seems I only see you when your heart is full of fear. Thank you, Pastor Charity. Be wise, my precious child. Don't wait till fear slips in. For those who seek me often will only hear you win. There's a place of confidence and stability and a flow when we're daily in his presence, not running at him in crisis. Mm, that's good. It should not be, again, this is Brother Hagin, it should not be just at those crisis times when we are driven to our knees. We should be spiritually prepared for such times through a daily prayer time, which we set aside for fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. Just like whenever things were so weird in March of 2020, I just simply inquired of the Lord. I was late to the party. I don't have social media or any of that. And so I didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't get online. I didn't get on my friend's Facebook account. You know, I just prayed. I said, Lord, what do I need to know about this? There's a why behind the what? Just do what you've always done. That's what we did. Mm-hmm. We just kept doing what we'd always done. Mm -hmm. He told me there was a why behind the what. In my hunger and in my, my pursuit of his face, he positioned me with people who knew what was going on, the truth, like mm -hmm. Dr. Rodney Howard Brown, for example. All these resources that we encourage you to read, listen to his rumble every single week. Mm -hmm. End of Days Update with Reverend Joe Morris. We'll link it. All these things you need to take advantage of Amen. because there's a lot of nonsense. There's a lot of narrative out mm -hmm. there. There's a lot of baloney floating around, right? So... The model that we see here, number one, is this This has to be personal. Yeah, we have a national day of prayer today. Yeah, we're praying together every day. But this doesn't need to be your only time of prayer. Pray as a family. Pray in your church, but pray privately. Start developing that personal relationship. And let me tell you, if you want it, I'm going to give it to you for free today. All you have to do is they're going to tell you what to do because I don't know what to do. Um, go to there'smorenow.com. Claim this free offer. It's prayers that avail much. We're going to send you that book for free today if you want it. And if you're watching on demand, whenever you watch this, if you want prayers that avail much, we're going to send it to you for free. Just as our gift into your, your world because when Pastors Dean and Kathy 
got re rededicated their life to the Lord. They'd grown up in a denomination. They didn't know how to pray. And I know that's a real thing. Mm -hmm. But these books were so invaluable. There's several volumes. But we're going to send you Prayers That Avail Much, um, part one. And, and it basically teaches you how to pray and has prayers in it that are based on the Word of God. And so if you want that, all you have to do, they'll figure it out. Because I don't, I don't know what to do. You just need to go to there'smorenow.com. It's going to say something about what I just said. And when it does, just click there and we're going to send you prayers that avail much for free. And until a month from now, it'll expire a month from now. So on June 5th, we will no longer be sending those out. But from now until June 5th, we're sending out prayers that avail much for free. If you don't have it, we love you. Postage on us. It's all on us because we love you and we want you to be successful in your life of prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, join with us as we pray today. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up the United States House of Representatives. Father, we pray for House Leader Nancy Pelosi. Father, send laborers across her path to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to her. Father, we just align our hearts with yours. You, you take no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Father, you desire that none be lost. We pray laborers across her path, spirit-filled believers, bold people full of the fire of the Holy Ghost uh, to preach the gospel to her, Father. Send forth the laborers in Jesus' name, Father. We thank you uh, so much, Father, for the Great South. We're grateful for all of the pastors and leaders that are represented by the Great South, Father. We just thank you so much for your anointing upon them, for your protection upon them, Father. We thank you uh, that they have more than enough hands to the plow, so to speak, Father. More than enough provision for their vision. More than enough volunteers. More than enough staff, Father. All the right staff, none of the wrong staff, Father. We just thank you that they're thriving in these last days, Father, that they're going out into their communities. Father, send forth the laborers in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the work that's being done, but we pray, Father, fervently that more laborers would go into these fields of harvest. We know that the time is short, Father. We know that Jesus is going to return so soon, Father. We're going to rapture out of here. The dead in Christ will rise first and we'll join them. But, Father, we want to occupy until he comes, Father. And we just thank you, Father, for sending forth laborers into these communities. Father, we're grateful for all that's being done, but we're excited about more being done, Father. We thank you for showing these pastors, Father, all hidden things that need to be seen, Father. Bring it to light. Cause it to come to light quickly in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up the governors in Arkansas, in Louisiana, Father. Asa Hutchinson in Arkansas. John Bell Edwards in Louisiana. Tate Reeves in Mississippi. Kay Ivey in Alabama. Brian Kemp in Georgia. Ron DeSantis in Florida. Henry McMaster in South Carolina. Roy Cooper in North Carolina, Bill Lee in Tennessee, Glenn Youngkin in Virginia. Father, we lift up the great South today. Father, we pray forth labors across their path to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. Father, that these governors would call upon the name of the Lord Jesus and be saved. Father, we pray that they would uh, stand up for righteousness and they would stand up for the truth of your word in every decision that they make in their uh, government positions, Father, in the political arena that they would stand up for righteousness in Jesus' name, Father, we pray for these leaders. We lift them up to you. May they be strengthened. May labors be sent across their path in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the mighty work that's being done on the earth today, Father. We thank you that all hidden things are being revealed as it pertains to the American economy, that as it pertains to the American people. Uh, Father, the protection of the American people, Father, in Jesus' name. The protection of the Constitution, Father, is, as far as it pertains to Roe versus Wade being overturned in Jesus' name, Father. We pray for the life, for the innocent, Father, for those babies that have no way of protecting themselves, Father. We fight for their protection, Father, for their life, for them to have a chance at living in Jesus' name. So rabaka satapashe. Ibre kesto vorobo kosho praya. Ribada basho praya tamase. Brika talamago robrobo do shete kebadiasta. Brika salavata neneshte. Ibre kese varabakoso. Robo do bosha pari rekeste. Landa kasto robrobo so. Ibraya tapasho to romokoso. Rabadabashe pre sabalamakoso. Ibra casta vadabashto. Braya tapasho to koso. I de braya tapasho robro. Rabadabashe pe. I de blamakoso to braya takasha. 
Honda da 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 basta. Riba da casala bata caso robogoso. Riba da basho poromo coso ola bagaste. Indera da braca tata shepe la mako. Ale rebrote, ele rebrate, ele rebrote, 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 Thank you, Father, that this is the victory that overcomes the world by faith. God, we stay in this flow today. We stay in this flow on this national day of prayer just as often as we have opportunity. Just praying in the Holy Ghost, believing that you're able to make a way where there seems to be no way. We take authority over the spirit of fear. We take authority over the spirit of perversion. We take authority over the spirit of strife and deception. We believe for every demonic and dirty deal to be exposed, revealed, and removed. Every every dis, dis, um, dishonest deal, every greedy deal perpetrated against the American people. Uh, uncover it in the name of Je in the name of Jesus. Yes. Ministering spirits, go now. We believe for revivals on the capital in the capital buildings of these states. In the name of Jesus, we declare Jesus is Lord over Arkansas. Jesus is Lord over Louisiana. Jesus is Lord over Mississippi. Jesus is Lord over Alabama. We plead the blood of Jesus over Governor K. Ivey. We believe that Jesus is Lord over the state of Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Overwhelming victory. We thank you, Father God, that your hand is upon your church, that the truth is marching on. We will not be moved by what we see, by what we feel, but we entrust ourselves to you. We know that the prayer of, of righteous people, the bold intercession of righteous people makes great exponential power available so we receive that power in act in action in our in our nation right now in the name of jesus and we rejoice we rejoice right now thank you for the victory thank you thank you for progress in the spirit in the name of jesus hallelujah amen 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 we love you guys have a wonderful day stay in this flow claim your offer for that free book and we will see you tomorrow 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 i love you tomorrow it's only a day away. Bye. Thank you, for, Thank you tuning for tuning in to this broadcast. If you've never received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, today's your day. Repeat this after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for all of my sins. I receive my forgiveness by faith. Jesus is my Lord and Jesus is my Savior. And my life will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, go to there'smorenow.com and click the button that says, I just got saved. We want to send you some resources as you get started in your relationship with God. Partnering with DSM gives you an opportunity to invest into the kingdom of God and help people step into all that God has for them. The seed you sow in Dean Shropshire Ministries will produce a great harvest. Welcome to Health Bites today. We're so glad you're joining us. The same day Jesus uh, died for your sin, He died for your sickness. By the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. Healing is in the redemption. You will manifest healing in your physical body as we continue to study the Word of God. about it this what you really need the simple truth god's word oh yes indeed it feeds your mind body and spirit every time you hear it what make it even more special is the holy spirit it brings darkness to the light and sinners to repent it don't take a lot just willingness and common sense who you somebody that's what the scriptures say the simple truth with pastor d monday through friday yeah. the simple truth with pastor d monday through friday the simple truth with pastor d monday through friday the simple truth with pastor d monday through friday Take a listen and get going. Yeah, the simple truth with Pastor D Monday through Friday. The simple truth with Pastor D Monday through Friday. The simple truth with Pastor D Monday through Friday. If you hear it, you should live.
give it, take a listen, here it go. But I'm gonna fix my life on the Word of God. I'm gonna set my attention on your Word. I'm gonna build my life on your Word. I'm gonna stand on your Word. I'm gonna speak your Word, and I'm not gonna let the enemy steal the Word from my heart. And that Word will produce it.